Hello again, and in this video, uh, I'm going to be going over how to edit primitives, okay, and also I'm going to go over some of the basic tools I use. Alright, so um, if I go over here, there we go, bring in the tools. This is basic tools that I tend to use. Uh, no doubt I've missed one or two off there, but for the, the majority of them are there, and it doesn't look like there's that many, and that's because it's not. Uh, I don't use many tools to create what I do. Um, obviously, I'll go through this in a second, but uh, hopefully these will really, really help you. Yeah, pop that back over there. Right, so I'm going to go into create. I'm going to create a box. I'm going to create, a, yeah, one segments across. Make it really basic. Okay, now what we're going to go into now is we've got to, in order to edit this. We've got to convert it to something called an edible poly. Now, some people might have used edible mesh before, um, and when I first started out, I used edible mesh as well. Um, but to be to be honest, I changed my mind about it because edible mesh gives you an awful lot of freedom, um, almost too much freedom. It does, it's it kind of prevents you from making your model as efficient as possible um, because it's so forgiving. So poly, edible poly will really sort of uh, mould you into an efficient modeler. So I, I recommend it. I re it doesn't really matter what I recommend. I'm showing you this, and you're probably going to use it anyway. Um, but anyway, look. Uh, to convert it to an edible poly, we right click, we go to convert to, and convert to edible poly. So right click, convert to, convert to edible poly. Right. And you'll see down here in the command panel that you get a whole new list of options, a whole load of stuff. And if you did have the graphite tools open, you'd see that they would also light up as well. Um, but we're not going to use that. As I said, we'll come back to that at a much later date. Um, and what you have is you have uh, edit geometry, uh, subsurface, subdivision surface. I don't use that, so I'm going to hide that. Um, but yeah, there's also other ones as you go through the other uh, modes. Um, but just to flick, well, actually, I don't need to do that, do I? What am I doing that for? If we drop this down here, you can see the different modes. So at the moment, we're in object mode. It doesn't say object mode, but um, if you tap on the bar up there and it goes dark gray, then we're in object mode. And that just means we can move the object around like so. Um, but if we go into vertex mode, we can do that by also selecting here as well. You can see little dots around the model, little blue dots. If I select them there, see, they turn red. And you can move them like so. Now, let's say I've wanted to select more than one. You can hold down control on the keyboard and click another one. And now we've got two selected. I wanted to deselect one. I hold down Alt and then drag or just click like so and that deselects them okay so once again you can drag select select the load of them if you want to add one control left click to remove alt left click to remove all of them just click outside all right that's all there is to that Oh, by the way, if you want to get rid of this annoying thing, just press J on your keyboard. I never like that. It's called the bounding box. It's stupid. All right. So the next tip I'll give you is probably the best one. It's probably the one I should have given you in the previous video, but eh, what the hell? Um, Control Z is going to be your best friend. All right. So if you press that. It will take you back, and you only get so many. I'd like to point out. Um, I think mine's set for 50. You can change it in the preferences. Um, there, level of undoes. It's actually set to 20. Oh dear. <laughs> I can live with that for now. Um, but if you do need to change that, if especially if you're a noob and you want quite a lot of them, it's customize preferences and scene undoes. And I think you know most computers can take 50. 
you know. But it does make it more and more unstable the more you use. So, you know, be very, very careful. Um, Max does have an auto backup feature. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't solely rely on that. Max also has a habit of corrupting and losing a lot of data. So, yeah, uh, make sure that you, uh, you know, very careful with that. Um, okay, so we've got that. I've shown you how to manipulate that. We scroll down in here, unlike objects, we also have edit vertices, and this goes for every single one of these. They'll have edit edges, edit borders, edit polygons, edit elements, so on and so forth. And these are the different kind of tools that you can get. Now, in vertex mode, really, I only really use uh, uh, target weld and uh, you know, weld. Um, I think these two tools I'll kind of come back to where I've made some cuts. So I'll jump to edit, uh, edge for now. Um, in edge mode, I tend to use, well, I could bring it over, can't I? There we go. In edge mode, I tend to use connect, chamfer, bridge, and turn. Um, now, connect is basically for connect I, I use it actually for neat cuts or controlled cuts in the model uh, of adding subdivisions um, so segments really controlled segments um, chamfer kind of um, how do I explain chamfer I suppose it's like if you took a file and you know fell down the edge of something it would make it flat but I can show you in a minute bridge connects um, creates a polygon between two edges um, really really useful tool that one is and uh, turn will turn triangles which will better be explained when you see it so with the connect tool the tool that I love the most um, let's say I wanted to I don't know create a door if I select that edge there and hold control down and left click and select that one if I go to the connect tool and go to the settings window there it brings up this here. Okay. Now what I can do is change the amount of segments I want. So let's say I want to go crazy like that. I don't really want to go crazy like that. I'm only going to use click it now. I'm only going to use one in this case. Um, but I can use slide to move it up and down. And this middle one here, if I did have two, pinches them together like that. Okay. So slide up and down. So if I pop that about there, okay, I can then press the plus and that confirms that one. And now I can select the next ones here and the next three. If I right click it between the arrows, check it brings it to zero, make that two. Pinch them together a little bit. I have a door. <laughs> There we go. Now, we could do more to this in a minute, um, but I guess this is a chance to... Uh, wait a minute, I was going to go back and um, you know uh, show you vertices, but I'll, I'll, I'll go back to that in a minute. Um, so, the Connect tool is really, really useful. It's really useful for uh, creating new segments in a controlled way, especially important if you're doing low-poly stuff. Um, I just love it, it's such a good tool. Um, the chamfer tool can get messy, so it's one that not to use all the time. Um, but if I say I select all the edges around the top here, and go to the chamfer tool, once again press the settings, and you can see we're doing that. It you can actually you can see it does something funny there. Well, I can fix that with uh, one of the vertex tools. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, if I bring that down like that, okay, there we go. And also that reminds me actually, I should put that on there. I've missed one. Collapse, a good tool. I can't believe I missed that off there. I'll show you that. Um, also works for other ones as well, but. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, there's Champa, useful. But you could see how easily you could probably uh, really go a bit overboard with it. Like if I did this and then went uh, like that, 
it gives it it makes it rounded you can really pump up the tries and um, this also creates an open edge like so I'm taking that have never used that but I guess someone might have a use for it um, but yeah that's all there is to that that's chamfer if you don't want to commit anything you can always click off and then click the red X or just click the red X okay so that was that one the other one I have is also the turn tool I use that a lot um, the turn tool that's down here this is going to be more useful for when you're working with triangles and stuff so to, be to demonstrate what this actually does you see how this edge is going this way here right look at the way the roof looks this goes like this this one dents in like that looks horrible but if I turn that there now it's fine. See? So I'll turn that one back, for example. See? Like that. So you can change the shape of the geometry just by turning the triangles, which is what these are. But I'll go a little bit more into geometric theory uh, in a later video. Um, this is all just about getting used to things right now. Okay? So. There we go. That's all there is to that. Um, other tools we have. So we've got edge out the way. That's all good. Ooh, bridge. Yeah, bridge. Of course, bridge. All right. Let's say, for example, um, I get rid of this door here. But let's say, for example, I wanted that back again. Now, there's lots and lots and lots of ways I could do this. Um, but one way I could do it is by using the bridge tool. And if I select that edge there and that edge there and go to the bridge tool here, I'm not going to bother getting into settings, but if you press it, it bridges it, creates a new polygon in between it. See? All good. So I'll demonstrate that once again. I'm going to go into polygon, select one, delete it, back into edge mode, select that side, that side. And bridge and it's done its best to do it and it will but there we go Ta -da! <laughs> okay now the next thing we'll go through right is the I'm gonna mark that off green because that's satisfying yeah green right next one I'll go to is I'll go back to vertex all right now, in Vertex, the first tool I want to introduce you to is one that's going to be used an awful lot, an awful lot. It's called Target Weld. Now, Target Weld, basically, you can take two points and weld them together. So if I take that point there, see there's a dotted line there now, I can weld it to that point there. See? Take that point there and weld it to that point there. Done. Same with this one, down to there, this one, down to there. Yeah, I might as well get rid of all of it. There we go. Gone. Right. Target well, very good. Um, the other tool we can use as well, and uh, in fact I'll show you the collapse tool at the same time because they can achieve a similar um, result. Um, is the weld tool. Okay, if we select this, bump up the threshold, see it snaps at some point. There you go. And all this does is it welds two points together, two or more points, I should say. And you can see that this is the triangle count, and they drop down. Well, oh, actually, it's the vertex count, but there you go. Bonk. Yay! Okay, press that, and it's gone. Now there is another way to do that as well. Um, we could use collapse, which I think is a great tool. If you press that, it will snap any together. But be careful what you have selected, because if I select that and go collapse, it freaks out. It deforms. So you know, make sure that you've got every since only what you want selected selected. Okay, there we go. And 
Apart from that, or a text browser. Oh yeah, make planar. Now for newbies, no doubt, because their level control will be off, they'll end up with a model that's got wonky bits like this and that. And it'll be all over the place, like I don't know, like that. Now the make planar tool will make it flat. If we select those vert uh, vertices there, go make planar, it's made it flat, but of course it's done it at an angle, which is not what we wanted. So I go back, control Z. If we use X, Y, and Z, it's more, uh, it's more specific, it does it to world space. So we can go like X, for example. Okay, see, it's flattened it on X. Or we can do it on uh, Z, and it squashes it on Z. But of course, in this case, we want it on Y, like so. So it still might not be perfect, but at least it's flat now. And with the bottom one, of course, that is Z. So we do that. There we go. At least it's flat and a bit more controlled. Still not flat there, though. X. There we go. Right. So it just helps you clean your model up and keep it. It's something you'll do automatically. Um, you know, when you get a bit better, but you know, for now, that's something that can really, really help you keep your model nice and tidy and stop it getting skewiffy and stuff. Um, okay, that's vertex, let's tick that off. Boom, done. Okay, um, other ones, uh, polygon mode. Okay, so this one's got some great ones in polygon mode. Um, scrolling down. Let's skip past all of them there for now. See, there's similar ones in here as well. You've got Make Play Mask, so you could do it this way if you wanted to. You don't need to necessarily go into um, Vertex. They all seem to have similar tools, um, but then they have obviously their special sections. So, for example, Extrude. If I take the door there and I go into the settings for Extrude, you can see that it pushes it out. So, or alternatively, I can push it in like that. All right. Um, there's other settings as well. We've got local and by polygon. Now, this is kind of in order for me to demonstrate this, I have to select the whole model. Okay. Um, if I go by group, right, it'll extrude it as a group. In fact, let's take off one of them. In order to do it, I'll take off the door. And by group, you can see that it'll do it by group, and it, it doesn't really have much of an effect. If I do it by local, it kind of like pads it out, almost like it's wearing a helmet. Looks kind of funky, actually. Uh, and by polygon, it <laughs> it looks really weird, is what it looks like. But there we go. <laughs> really strange. So back to by by group, really. That's all we need. I mean, you wouldn't select the whole thing like this and do it by group. Um, really, you'd only ever select one polygon like that, or a few, like so. <laughs> you'd never do that many. Um, so I'll choose the door in this case. Okay, and um, press the green tick. And there we go. So obviously that's useful in a lot of ways, you know, extruding things out and pulling and, you know, whatever you need to do really. It can expand the model and you can continue building it outwards. Um, other tool, bevel tool, the bevel tool. Okay, the bevel tool could have been used to create the roof. That's, there's loads of ways you can do things. Um, I'll demonstrate it on the side instead in this one. Choose the bevel tool. Now the bevel tool does extrude, and it does the exact same ones, you see, by polygon, local, and group. But the difference is with it, is that it's also got this option, which can pull it in like so. So, you know, you can see we could have achieved the roof in a similar way. If I press that, if I wanted to square it up maybe a little bit, I could just scale it using the tool. And that's kind of all there is to that. Let's go back. Uh -huh. 
Okay, so what else have we got? Inset, another good tool. Um, if I select the top, inset. So once again, it's got the same settings. This one does bevel, but it doesn't do the extrude. And I think this is more controlled. Um, I kind of prefer this in some ways. So press that, and then you could then go to extrude afterwards if you didn't quite want it to. Um, you know, if you didn't want it to extrude outwards slightly and you wanted it to just be flat on top, then that would be one way of doing it. Okay, so insert, really, really good as well. Uh, cut and slice plane. Cut tool, hey. Cut. Okay, let's say... Hmm, let's say, for example... I don't know, it'd be really rough to do this. But, uh, okay, I'll do that then. Um, let's say I wanted to cut across here, create a new polygon. You can do that. If you go there, you can do it from edge to edge. It's freaking out at the moment on me. Tell you what, this is probably a good time to show you something. Um, if you want to switch this, I should have done this in the last video. I kicked myself because I've obviously forgotten this. Um, but if you want to switch between, um, if you want to see through the model, if you press F3, you can switch it to wireframe. Um, F3 again switches it back to shaded with wireframe. F4 turns wireframe on and off. This can also be accessed by going up to here as well. But I find the quickest way is definitely to just press F4. Or F3 and just toggle them. There you go. So if I go to F3 and put it into wireframe, you can now see what I'm doing. So straight across. Bear in mind, I could always just use Connect for this, and this is why I very rarely use this tool. Um, but it's still worth flagging up. Um, obviously, the problem with this one is because I've cut it manually, it doesn't necessarily mean it's straight, and it's just one more step having to then go in and you know straighten it up. But, uh, you know, it's it's another way of doing it. Um, you know, if I wanted to, then I could extrude it out slightly. If I turn that off, extrude it. Whoa. You know, and I've got, I don't know, one of those silly little metal bar things you get on the bottom of doors. There we go. Um, there's also a uh, slice plane as well. Now, slice plane, if we select, let's say, mm, let's set all of that up there, all the way around the model. If we use slice plane, we can move this up, and you can see it's kind of like having a knife. You can just sort of cut right through it. And this little magic box here appears. So if I go, if I bring this around here, press slice. That's now created a cut neatly right the way through the model. Um, I can rotate this as well. So I can do it at an angle. Slice, slice, slice. You're never going to do this. You know, this is madness. But meh. Can we set it back? And there we go. If I turn slice plane off, it's going to have loads of mad cuts, <laughs> which I'm now going to proceed to delete. Okay, I'll keep that one. I like that one. Right. So I've shown you collapse, so that one's sorted. Um, border mode cap. Okay, this is kind of something I've used more now instead of bridge. Um, bridge was still worth showing you. If I delete that up there, um, let's say I want to bring it back. If you use border, it's just be much better if you've got a really complex shape as well. If you press the border, select that, you see it selects everything that's open, then use cap, it brings it back again. And this is great if you've got really complex shapes that you need to fix. Um, yeah, it will sort it out really, really quickly. Um, that's all there is to that. That was a nice, easy one. Okay. Now, object mode attach and element mode detach. All right. For this, I need to bring in another model. Okay, so let's say, I don't know, the house was lonely and it wanted a garage. All right, let's create a side bit there. All 
Okay. Now at the moment they're two separate models, two separate objects. See? Right. Now we could extrude it out, and I think that would be the recommended way of doing it, but in order to demonstrate this, and early on, while you're still learning, um, yeah, mashing objects together is fine. You know, stitching them is something that you're going to pick up much, much later on. Um, so in object mode, so if we go up here, make sure that yeah, none of this is selected by just tapping on this up here. You see it goes dark grey. It will say attach. And if you press attach and select any other object you have in the scene that you want to attach it to, it will attach it. Done. It should change to the same colour. There we go. That's all there is to it. You do want to change the colour, by the way. Just go up here. But you shouldn't have to, really, unless it's really annoying you. Um, that's all there is to it. If you wanted to detach that again, though, you have to use Element, or Polygon has it as well. Um, select the element, detach, and you don't want to detach it as an element, okay? You want to detach it full stop, so just leave it as it is, press OK, you know, give it a name if appropriate, and there it is anyway. It's now a separate object, but you might find that you'll have to go through and fix the pivot point. There we go, and that is that. Okay, so I've gone through all of them, that's all good. Um, I'm sure there's loads that I'm forgetting, um, but you know, one step at a time. Um, I think this is quite a lot to take in as it is. Um, just a key point to remember, more than anything else, is the toggle, because I can't believe I forgot that in the last video, of the wireframe, uh, F3 and F4 to toggle it off when it's shaded, like so. And that is all there is to it for this video. Um, yeah, we'll go into the next one and we'll keep moving forward. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, just ask me and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Uh, thanks very much for watching again. Uh, see ya.